Hi, this is a quick review of the new Zoho Project 8. Essentially, it's a change to the way that the system is laid out. It's a bit more user friendly in terms of how you use the system and how the information is displayed to you. Uh, the, um, the update has gone live now, so you might see next time you log into Zoho Project a pop-up, which I'll put on the screen now, that will just show you that you can move over, you click a link to move over to, to, to this new version. You can move back if you don't like it, but eventually you will be pushed into this new version. So you may as well jump into it now. So in this review, I'm just gonna show you some of the differences that I've noticed between this version and the old version. And if you've seen something else, if you're already using it, then please leave it in the comments. I'd love to, to see and hear about what you've experienced. I think overall it's good, but I think there needs to be more done in the background in some of the core features that hasn't been done in this update. So anyway, we'll move on and have a look at this. So the first thing is the home screen. I think that this looks more or less the same. I've been using the, the Projects version 8 for about uh, two months now. So I'm trying to remember the things that I, that I noticed had changed, uh, but definitely not really any changes in the home screen. One thing that I've noticed, I think under portfolio before, there was a, uh, a list of all the projects that you have open and like a timeline, a Gantt chart type view of each project, how long it was and the progress on that project so far. I don't see that in here and I think that's because it's moved into the projects view. The feeds has stayed the same, Discuss has stayed the same, uh, reports, again one change here that I've noticed, I'm sure there was a Gantt chart view in reports before and that's gone from here. And again, I think that's because you now get that information from the project view. Calendar is the same, so let's just jump into the project view. And this is where you'll see the, the main change in all of this, is that now projects are displayed uh, on a kind of a table view. So this is more, if you've used monday.com or ClickUp, that kind of thing, it's moving more towards that type of user experience, which is good. Uh, it's definitely a good, a way to, to use the system. It's something that people coming from other tools will, will benefit from if they've, if they've used those other tools. So basically uh, the projects are all listed here. I've won, I'm in a, a just a test environment I've set up here. Uh, at the top of the screen under the list view, we've now got a Gantt view. And this is what I was talking about before. I think that this view was accessible previously through the home screen. But this is great because now you've got your list of all of your projects. You can filter that list to see exactly what you want to see. And then you can view those on a timeline to see how much work there is in progress, how things are progressing. And I think that just works really well. On the right hand side here, there's some options for the Gantt chart view. These used to be at the top of the screen, I think in the Gantt report as well. Um, there was some kind of pop up or drop down, I think at the top of the screen. And you could click these like to make it full screen, to export it as a PDF and um, create baselines, that kind of thing. But anyway, now it's all here. Great. Go back to the list view. Uh, there's an option here on the right hand side to add new columns. There aren't any additional columns to add here at the moment, so there's nothing to display. The columns can now be adjusted by just dragging and dropping them to where you want them. And I can't remember, I think, yeah, you can hide a column. If I hide it, it will show up in that list at the end. Um, I thought that there was an option here to pin a column, but it doesn't look like that, that it doesn't look like that's here. Um, so I'm not sure where I've picked that up from. Uh, so that's that. There's an automation button here as well, which wasn't there before. Again, this is more kind of Monday-esque. Uh, we had automation features before but they were accessible through the settings. So now if we click on that, we can create a new workflow rule here and uh, we can trigger certain actions, certain things to happen based on something changing in the project. So, you know, it's good. It's a, a better user interface, uh, I think. Uh, you may have noticed there as well, when I right clicked on the columns, uh, I think that there's more, I don't remember that you could do that much previously by right clicking. Uh, but you can see now here when I right click on a project or right click on a column heading, there's a kind of a context menu there as well. So that's it. We can now go into a project. Now there's two ways to do this. One is to, to hover over the project name and you can just click on this access project 
or you can click on the project, open project details or open details. If I do the open details, we see a page with all of the details of the project, the kind of project configuration settings. Uh, if you've got a budget set up, that would show up here as well. This information, I'm going to go into the project now just to show you this, access the project. This information used to be accessible in the project view by clicking on dashboards and then there was an option at the top of the screen here to look, I think it said project details. So this is better I think because the, they've put the button at the top of the screen here as well when you're actually in the project because this was a bit unintuitive before having to go into dashboards and then go into another option to see the project settings. So this is a much better option. If I click it again here, you see the same information. So good, good, uh, good update, good change. So then the next thing is tasks. So you can see tasks are laid out in the same way as they were in the projects view. It's laid out on a table type view. So again, on this one, we can choose a Gantt view to see all of the, uh, to see the Gantt chart for all of our tasks. So this is great. The Gantt chart works exactly the same as before. You can drag and drop things around. You can create dependencies between things. To be honest with you, the dependencies feature doesn't work really well, I found. So you saw there when I connected, this is just general anyway, this, <laughs> this uh, particular review piece, this applies to the old version as well. If I set a project uh, task uh, a couple of days later, uh, than the previous task and then I create a dependency between the two it pulls the it pulls this task back you can change a setting so that it doesn't do that but I have I've not been able to find a way that you can stop it moving the task altogether so an example of where this might be important is if you're working with third parties and you've booked a third party in to do a task on a specific day or you've booked You've had to make a booking that there's a task that has to happen on a certain day and it can't move unless you go through some kind of procedure to change a booking or change something so that so that you're I don't know the best way to describe this, but you're actually um, scheduling you're, you're rescheduling the task like it's like a manual activity that you have to go through or some kind of approval process. You can't lock a task in place. I can move it back now, but I'm pretty sure. I think if I move this, it will, no, it won't move it forward, move it back. Can't be before a successor. Let's just try that. Yeah, so I moved it back and it pulled that task back. And I think that that's the problem that I've been having. I've tried all of the different settings. I've spoken to uh, project support and it's not possible to do that. You notice when I went backwards there, we got this error just saying that you can't, Put it before the task before well i would expect to see the same thing happen if i if this was a like a firm task or a locked task that if i tried to move this it would say we can't move that because this task ahead of it is locked um i'm i've gone on a bit of a rant here sorry about that but that's a real bugbear of mine and that's where i think the usability of the system the layout changing the layout like it's great and it looks nice and i hope it will encourage more people to use zoho projects but there are fundamental features that as a project manager you would want uh, because it means then now that the dependency feature isn't really useful to me as a project manager because things will move on the timeline that shouldn't be moving anyway run over so let's move on um i can come out of gantt view we still have kanban view and this works the same you can drag and drop the um, cards into different columns but another thing you can do now is you can click on the card to change things so add owners change dates um start the timer I'm not sure what this one is, is it the status. Yeah, OK. Um, I think I can right click on this to clone it. So you've got this access to this context menu as well. Um, that's good. They're all really nice feature updates, which make this more similar to Trello, which is good because it's giving people again another reason that they could move over to Zoho projects. If you like using Trello, uh, this will be a good option for you now. Like it's much more user friendly than it was before. Uh, and intuitive. So let's go back to the list view. 
So another nice feature that we've got now as well is that we can drag and drop tasks. So let's take this one here, for example, at the top. When you hover over, you can see there's a little handle appears there. So I can click on that and I can drag it somewhere else in the list. If I want it to be a subtask of another task, I can just drop it onto that task and it becomes a subtask. If I want to move it to another list, I can, well, maybe first I have to drag it out of being a subtask and then I can drag it onto another list. Okay, so that's great. This, that's a really nice feature because you couldn't do that easily before. Uh, another feature of this is if you notice when I hover over the tasks, I actually can't remember how you used to open a task. I think you just click the name, but now you hover over and you get this open details and you can click on that. And then this is a familiar view that we had before. Another thing that's updated uh, here is the lists, let's see, subtasks. So this is fine. Here's my list of tasks. This is my master task that I'm in now and my list of subtasks is in the table view. One of the things that I really don't like about this new uh, layout is the table view in the timesheets. I use timesheets a lot for all of the different types of work that I do. And now adding timesheets is a bit cumbersome. I actually reported this when I was doing the early access version of this. That was one of my main concerns about this update. And I gave feedback and I see that since they've launched it, they've added in this add time log button because that wasn't there before. So what you had to do with the initial update was you clicked, uh, actually, I wonder have they got rid of it altogether now. It says here, add a time log. So what you would do previously was you would click into here, you'd select a user and you would add the time log. You'd add the details here, but it was working in a funny way that they would appear You'd add, you'd add in the time and then it would appear in the list down here, but your cursor would still be up here. It was very, it was very strange. One of the reasons that I don't really like this view is because I tend to leave quite a lot of notes in my time logs and the, the space is much more limited now. It used to be more like comments. So it was laid out like this. And if I add a comment in, this is a comment and add the comment. You can see it, it's kind of like a social media feed type scenario. And time logs was the same. Every time a time log was added, it just went into a list. You know, it went to the top of the list and then the next one, the next one, the next one. I preferred that because it just showed me, it was like a comment. I could just read all the notes. It said how much, it, uh, how much time had been spent and a few other details who had added the time log. Um, but now uh, at least, I'm not sure what's happening here. I may have to report this as an issue, but anyway, um, now you can click this button at least, and you've got the, this is what you used to see when you add a time log entry. This is great. This is how I create a time log entry. It works perfectly. You've got lots of space to write in your notes. You can expand that. Brilliant. Um, however, adding them into this area, uh, if that's working for you, then I just find that a little bit more cumbersome than just clicking add time log and putting in the details. Anyway, second rant over. Uh, so they're the two main things that I've mentioned. One of them wasn't even to do with the update, but I think it should have been fixed as part of the update. And that's just a little gripe I have with this particular update. Documents, the same. Um, I think all of this stuff is the same. Pretty much anywhere if I've got issues here, um, that's going to be shown in a table as well. I think you can reorder these as well. Yeah, you can reorder anywhere there's a table. You can drag and drop these columns to reorder them. So I think that that is pretty much it. Let me just come out of this and have a quick look. Um, I've mentioned automation here as, as well already. Um, everything else as well, pretty much where there's lists. So users at the top here. This is now shown in a table view. Um, Issues is shown in a table view, timesheet shown in a table view. Um, and actually here's here's uh, an example. So I wonder, can I, yeah, look, okay, I guess here it's gonna let me add in, uh, I guess it would let me add in, but you can see here, this is where you would actually add in your timesheet entries. So let's just put one hour, select a task. So you can see what I mean here now, it's, I've added it here. This is the line where I add everything in. But as soon as I add it in, let's just pick a different one here. This is T2. It goes in there, right? Brilliant. There's my new line. 
I put an hour's worth of work, I hit the tab key and it's gone. It's dropped down to another line. Now it's trying to get me to add in more information here. As a user, that's not intuitive to me. I'm ranting again, apologies. So that is, that's basically it. Um, everything else more or less remains the same. There's not really been any major updates or changes that I've noticed to the, to the back end, to the settings, to the kind of core features of the tool. Um, and that's basically it. So I hope that's been useful to you. And if you found something else, if you found this useful, I'd love to love to hear about it. If you found something else that I haven't mentioned, then please let me know. I would love to hear what you found and have a look at it myself. Thanks a lot. Bye for now. Hi everyone, thanks for watching. And don't forget, if you want more Zoho tips and tricks straight to your inbox, you can sign up to my newsletter. The link's in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next one.